Hi, good afternoon guys and thanks for joining me this afternoon so there is fire on the mountain this is because Aburi and Lamidia Papa have reconciled and the main reason behind their reconciliation is to join forces to fight against Peter Obi. That is what they are saying, that they want to fight, they want to be an opposition to Peter Obi. So you see what is happening in Labour Party now as we speak. I'm a bit confused because I don't even know where this is coming from. Should I say it is the handwork of APC? I don't know. Should I say it is because um, Peter Obi decided to stand by what is right because he said he was not going to support um, uh, Aburi to do a kangaroo convention without the right thing being done? Is that where it's coming from? I don't know. But what I want obedience to know is that this is what is happening presently. As you can see, it was reported by Arise TV and um, let me even read out what Rufai said quickly and then we'll go from we'll go from there. Let me show you. Sorry, I said let me read out. It's there on the screen. You can see what Rufai said. Problem everywhere. Now also, the northern elders have turned on the heat on Tinubu. They said northerners are becoming malnourished. No food, nothing. They are even showing pictures. And they are saying it's his government, so he should do something. I don't even think Tinubu even is to listen to all these things because the man, yeah, the man just, the man just they like uh, who if they talk to him, they enter here, they come off from here. Uh -huh. Now so the man just take day. Now that was uh, Usman uh, Yusuf. The man has been one person who always speak truth to power. Sha. you can't take that. From him, I'm going to be showing you what he said. But before I do that, let me quickly show you this piece by Kate Henshaw, the very, very lovely one. What is what is the what is what is the uh, how did she put it now? Um, the what of the life of an average Nigerian. What is an average Nigerian's what? Please listen to her. I will come back. We will continue. A road to Rehobos. What is the value of a Nigerian life, I ask? What are the costs and implications of being a citizen of this great nation? Yes, this nation is great. It can be great. Great in size, but not in stature. As a teenager, my parents could afford to give us the basic requirements. We went to good schools, at least I did, ate good meals at these schools, dressed well. These days, <laughs> if you have a roof over your head, you have jet. You can at least afford two meals a day. You have a car. You are blessed. Reverend Jesse Jackson said, leadership is more than winning elections. It demands improving the welfare of the people. The federal government of Nigeria recently gave itself a pass mark on its first year. Oh, the jury is still out on that. An honest conversation with the average Nigerian will put it in perspective. As I went to have my pedicure, please, nobody should call me elite, the other day, <laughs> the ceaseless sound of the generator in the salon was hard to ignore. I initiated a conversation with the owner. Madam, how is business? She shrugged. I said, mm. Kids, in the usual Nigerian parlance, we thank God. I asked her how many generators she had, and she replied, three in number. My mouth was open. How much diesel? Did she consume 1,200 liters, and that's per day? She replied, and it barely lasted her the week. And that's what I said, you see. However, the local tax collection agency would hound her to no end to pay dues despite the absence of an enabling environment. When she complains to them, they, they retort, Our own NATO collector, go and meet government and complain. She can now, Rehoboth means a place of enlargement and flourishing. It refers to the land of inheritance that only God can give and that the enemy cannot steal from you. Nigeria is that land which we and our children have been given as Nigerians to dwell in peace. Instead of our young people unemployed as spectators to the display of unimaginable affluence by our politicians, they soon will find other ways to earn their keep and it will affect every single one of us. 
The road to railboard is indeed in need of urgent repair and attention. The sooner we get cracking, the better it will be for us all. All right, welcome back, guys. I guess you heard her. Now, the truth is that if I'm to answer that question, I will say the words of the life of, of an average Nigerian to our politicians is nothing because they don't see us as human beings because the truth is that if they do, then they will be more empathic towards the people. But it's obvious they don't see us as human beings. That is why the Senate President, Abu came out openly to say that Tinubu's life is worth more than ordinary Nigerians. So therefore, they must sign a presidential jet to be bought for him. Imagine that kind of unguided statement. So it's obvious from that statement that the worth of an African Nigerian means nothing to the life of Apabio and Co. Now, having said that, let me show you what um, Yusuf Usman said. I will come back. We will wrap up. Please watch. We like it or not, this is, we like it or not, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is a president and commander in chief and is his government. Everywhere in the world, nobody will say it is Governor Rata or Governor this. It is President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's Nigeria that we are seeing this. So he must be proactive and come in and as an emergency feed our people. He gave a directive to release 42,000 tons of grains to give to, 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 to vulnerables. But guess what? The honest truth is that there is nothing in the, in the silos. Mr. President, there is nothing in the silos. These patients, these kids do not need grains. They are marasmic. They need high protein milk to bring them back to life. Two cups of rice that the governors give will not do it. So, Mr. President, you need to keep an eye. This is a national security uh, issue. All your security officers, the NSA, must pay attention and make sure we don't get to what we are seeing in the Sudan or Yemen. The governors, we cannot trust them. With Where are our governors in northern Nigeria now? They are all in Saudi Arabia telling God what I do not know with these children in, the, in, in their states. The national security advisor should advise the president and tell him, we have an emergency. And the governors must stand up and feed our children. It is not rice, it is not maize that will fix these kids. It is high protein milk that will fix these children. And they are all over. It's not only in the north. It's more in the north because of the insecurity. Go to any hospital in this country, including the most, the, the, the richest state in this country, you will see this. There is hunger in the land. The child is the barometer of the family. This is an indication of severe malnutrition in this country. Mr. President, for goodness sake, for the love of God, do something about it. Get your national security advisor to be involved in this and solve this problem. All right, welcome back, guys. I guess you saw it now. Omar. Like I said, Yusuf Uzman is one person that always speaks through to power. You can't take that away from him. He was against Buhari even when Buhari was there. I know we used to say, okay, the North, Northerners know how to support their own, but when it's a Southerner, they want to turn on the heat and all of that. But this man is an exception. This man was all over Buhari when Buhari was in power and now he's doing the same to Tinubu, holding government accountable. Now, one thing our politicians have mastered the act of doing is the act of lying. They come to you, they lie, they sell a whole lot of lies to you and the gullible ones who believe. It's just like when Tinubu was campaigning for Bori and they said they are going to, crude oil will be pouring everywhere. They are going to uh, take dollar from one era to, I mean, to one dollar to one era. They are going to pay unemployed people. All those lies. And now, he exposed another lie. Give grains from the silos. Silos that don't have grains. Now, if they say you don't order me, they carry 42 uh, ton of grains. Give the vulnerable. And do you know when this order was made? This was made like six months back. And up to today, one grain never reach anybody. Do you know why? Because the silos are empty. There is nothing there. So they do all these things for the camera. And then the media will take it. Then the gullible ones will come and praise them and sing their praise. Psychophants. 
while the reality on ground is that these guys are not doing anything those they said they should give things to are not getting anything so if you don't know our politicians they will confuse you but some of us know them and we know the genuine ones too and that is why we are following one of the genuine ones so that is it guys that's what is happening i said let me show you thanks for watching and god bless you